Oh, oh, oh the bean curd roll. Oh man. I don't need pie blood right now. Go uh choose out fun goal. Yo, Andrew, you think Chinatown cheap pizza is ever gonna go away? I mean, I don't know, maybe eventually because gentrification is inevitable, kind of like Thanos. You know, maybe a little bit, but at the end of the day, Chinatown Cheap Eats serves the working class community while they're working, and Asians never stop working. That is true. So, what are you saying? And we're Asian. Yeah, we're, we're pretty Asian. So it means we gotta keep it going. Chinatown Cheap Eats part nine. <sighs> all right, all right, I feel it, I feel it, but what if we stopped at eight? Because eight, I mean, Chinese people love eight. That's a lucky number, too. Nine is also a Chinese lucky number, but a lot of people don't know about that one. What does nine mean? Look it up. Oh. We got a tractor coming through. I do, yeah, no, that's my, that's my cuisine, uh, call mine. A reopened Cheung Fun staple, Fujo lychee pork, Mexican Chinese sponge cakes, 25 cent skewers, and the Chinese takeout spot that we used to live on top of. All these things and more in this episode of Chinatown Cheap Eats. And by the way, there have been a lot of great organizations helping support the community, so we'll leave some links down below. Let's go. All right, you guys, I'm about to order some Fujinese food. I do not get Fujinese food that often. Lighter flavors, a lot of mai fun, mi fun, which is a thin rice vermicelli noodle. So this is how they're making the quad kias, and they're making the sui jiao still in a wok. This is pretty interesting. Normally you would think that the sui jiao would be cooked in here, but they're cooked over here. So this is pretty dope. They know, hey, they know the feng bros. They know we approve. We just trying to do good things in the community, man. Yeah. 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 All right, you guys, we are still in Chinatown Extended Two Bridges right now, and we're in front of Mayu Spring. And the owner's Fujinese, but they're serving sort of like pan Chinese food. Obviously, they have some northern touches as well. Um, but it's pretty cool, and it was actually super clean. Yeah, it's actually really clean in here, and it's really cheap. Each of these items was under $5. We have the Fujinese one ton, we have a taro cake, we have a big pork and chive bao, we got the banh man, which is the peanut noodles. I mean, you just have a variety of things here, steam and fried dumplings, so I'm excited. Dude, this sofa, I can't comment because I haven't had the food yet. This seems like a diamond in the rough. Guys, this I think this is a hidden gem, man. We're still on Catherine Street. Hand is holding it on the yo, bottom. Yo, I'm gonna go ahead and say this, man. Fujinese style one tons that look like little goldfishes are the most underrated style of one ton because nobody thinks about it, but they're good. Let's try the bun, man. It's the bun, the bun, so man. A lot of people think those are sesame noodles. They straight up told me that's just their version of peanut butter. How is that compared to other bon mians that you've had? Sweet, salty, creamy. I like it. Noodles are cooked fresh. It's super hot. Can't complain. I believe that this is a Fujinese thing. A fried radish cake. All right. Dumpling. It's pretty good. Mm. Yo, may you spring. May you try this. All right, you guys. Mm. I think when it comes to ultra cheap Chinatown dumplings, these were two fifty. You just, you know, you're you're well within your right to just to do that. Put a little bit of do that. that. Boom. Very solid, a lot of chill time, which is uh, the green leek. And I've got some fried fish bows. Why don't you go for this Bowser and the Tonyo Bay? Eight springs. springs. Oh! oh. Sh <laughs> wow. Ain't no wonder why you just have one of these two wow. Bowsers and you're good for breakfast, you're good for lunch. I did not expect there to be big, juicy chunks of pork belly in here. Roll by. Might guys, be the five out of five. Guys, there are some low key bangers here at Mayu. And, you know, is everything fire? I don't know, but this is Mayu Spring on Catherine is a hidden gem. If you know what to order, guys, 
Here's the address right here. Marco, we're on Henry Street. This is another one on your childhood list. Tell us about it. Yo, so I've been coming here for maybe the last 10 years. Uh, this is my first rice roll I've ever had before. And uh, they're really good, they're really cheap, and I had never had another rice roll besides this one. Right, but they closed down during the pandemic and they just reopened, yes, right? Yeah, they, they closed down for a few months, yeah. This is really interesting, Andrew, because uh, this is not really fully Chinatown. We're in Chinatown Extended right now, and I would say, in my opinion, Andrew, you agree, zero percent tourists coming in. I like, don't, zero. There's like, no tourists They cannot that. rely yeah. on tourists at all. I don't think you're gonna find this spot on a tourist list, okay? You're gonna find the spots that are deep in the heart of Chinatown, of course. We get it, but these are on the outskirts. This is for the neighborhood. Sun, Hing, Lung, Ho Fun, Tofu. We are here at Sun, Hing, Lung, Ho Fun, and Tofu the most longest name ever. I'm not gonna lie, man, the food looks really good out here in Two Bridges. I was not expecting this. They're making it for the local people. You know what it is? They're making it for the local people, the local taste buds, so you gotta make it legit, you know? And I'm not saying like these are the most expensive dishes, or the highest quality, but the taste is on point. All right, you guys, we have the roast pork. Um, you know, this is a classic, cha I mean, what's more Chinatown than roast pork? I'm really excited about my curry fish ball one. God let you don. Let's check this out. Dude, the amount of care and labor they put into this for $2.50, $2 is incredible. I thought that the tofu was actually fish balls at first. Honestly, this is a five out of five. I think this is the best thing here. I don't even need to try the other stuff. No, the the lobster one's good. The lobster one's lobster good. one is good. All right, I dare you to try this one. Huh? So good. Okay. Okay. You gotta get the curry fish ball one. Get an egg in it. The curry is on point. The flavor is spicy. It's it's very, very flavorful. It's not too milky. Fish balls are good, man. That's that's the one. That's the one. We're here on Madison and Catherine here at Shunway. Marco, you grew up going to this spot. Can you tell us more about it? Yo, it does not get more hood than Shunway. All right, it does not get more hood than that. This is like the Mike Tyson of of hood eats right here. Right, this might be oh. something that you more would think you would find in, in Brooklyn or Harlem, right? Now, what are we defining as hood Chinese food? It's because this spot serves a dish that is just chicken wings and french fries, which not every hole in the wall Chinese spot is even gonna serve. Even spots that serve chicken wings may not serve yeah. it with just french fries. But listen, what they did here was they perfected the chicken wing. It has the perfect crispiness to it. They downed it with hot sauce. You have your fries on the side. And overall, it's a 10 out of 10 over here and, with their chicken wings. And you can get sweet plantains. I, yes. got, I got sweet plantains, so. Where could you find that anywhere else? Like on the outskirts of Chinatown or Lower East Side area? How long has Shunwei been here for? How many years? How many years? I got 10 something years. 10 years, bro. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, Marco, I think this is the first time we've done like an Asian-centric food video where you knew more than me. I know, right? This you is do? the first time <laughs> I've ever I don't even know what the garlic sauce is. I'm not Yo, familiar. I'm gonna put you on, David. I'm gonna put you on. All right, let's take a look at what we got. That's the way to rip the bag, open it up. It was very review. cheap, guys. Uh, I wanna say everything was about like $6. Yeah. $6. Here's the main event, chicken wings and fries. Woo! Of course, with the hot sauce on it, garlic sauce on it. With uh, the ketchup on it yeah, too, right? everything. Wow. I mean, yo, we got the whole nine yards on there. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. But with these chicken wings that I love, is that cinnamon taste. Oh, okay. Obviously, they have the fried plantains that sort of cater to well, like the Dominican or Spanish population. Yeah, which uh, there's a lot of Dominicans, you know, Puerto Ricans here in the area. So, you know, everybody gets to eat. Crab Rangoons. Oh, these are really good. They're good, wow. yeah, 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 man. The history of the Crab Rangoon is really interesting. It's kind of based off of a Burmese dish, but it was served at Thai restaurants. It's from the Bay Area. It's really not a Chinese food at all, but it uses one ton chips and uh, cream cheese on the inside. So, dude, this those is your, amazing. No, these, it's good. Those and are some good the, ass crab rangoons. There's very little crab in there, but it's more cream cheese, I say. Yeah. But yo, it don't get more hood than that, man. No. We love our cream cheese in the hood. It's, but, the, you know, it's, it's little bits of the imitation crab. I swear to you, this is the best Chinese hood takeout chicken wings you will ever have in your lifetime. Okay. Hood, hood chicken, chicken wings. wings. Okay, part. Go for the flat part. It's good. Mm, good. And they make the base batter very like blank slate. Wow. Like it's kind of just an eggy flavor. It's not really like, um, it doesn't have the salt and pepper or the jalapenos yeah. on it or anything. What I love about these chicken wings is that the batter's not too thick. It's probably one layer. They didn't double batter it. And you really get to taste the chicken because the wings aren't that big, but the chicken is tender. Yo, so 
And yo, it's almost like, why would I want to go to KFC or Popeyes when I have chicken wings out of the fetch right here? In a larger sort of macro perspective, do you bemoan the uh, disappearance of hood Chinese food? Because it's sort of yo, slowly I mean, going away. Yo, it's slowly That's going away, but yo, it's what I grew up on. Like, you know, growing up, I didn't have a lot of money, so I was always, you know, getting my, my, my hood spots all the time. And, uh, you know, it's a staple in my life, the, the Chinese spots, which a lot of them are going away. And I noticed a lot of them, they're making uh, seafood spots out of them, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, they're cool, but I, I you can't you can't beat a hood Chinese takeout. You can't do it. Hood Chinese spots in Chinatown, sirens. It doesn't get any more real than that. That's On to the next spot. All right, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats is a very interesting spot, Golden Forest. Now, on the spectrum of Chinese takeout spots, especially in New York City, there is a spectrum, okay? There's ones that are a little bit more for like the, you know, Asian community, and then there's ones that are really designed for like the non-Asian community. And I would say Golden Forest does an amazing job of cutting the difference. The quality-wise, portion-wise, and even price-wise, it's actually gonna be in between a actual Chinese restaurant and a Chinese takeout spot, so. Ran by a great family, they're super nice. And fun little fact, first time we lived in New York, we lived on top of Golden Forest. Let's go. Hello. Hello, 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 how are you? Yo, Chris, how long has Golden Forest been here? Uh, 25 years. 25 years. These are the customers, not just customers. They're becoming my friends, you know. They repeat it, you know. Some of them, you know, order like three, four times a week, you know. When my customer is happy, I'm happy too, no complaint, you know. Guys, when it comes to cheap Chinatown eats, you got to include some of the Chinese takeout spots. And like we were saying, this spot is really splitting the difference between like an authentic restaurant and an Americanized Chinese spot. I mean, here, even the orange chicken, or this is, all right, excuse me, this is the General So's chicken. And as you can see, the quality is pretty good. It's not too soupy. It really looks like the picture here. That's really good. The chicken to crust ratio is super high. One thing that's really interesting is that Kind of because of the pandemic, a lot of even Chinese international students got introduced to more of the American Chinese food because during the pandemic, they needed to get food and a lot of the big chains or big restaurants were closed, but the Chinese takeout spots were open. So they were ordering from spots like this. And so you got kids from China eating Americanized General Tso's chicken. Of course, I gotta go with the chicken and broccoli, white breast meat, big slices cooked very well. Um, just not that greasy, man. Shout out to Golden Forest. Sometimes when you get chicken pieces this big from certain other spots, it can kind of feel a little rubbery or it's like over um, starchized, I think. You know how it's like a little bit too soft and it's too tenderized, but this is just right. Really plump pieces. Honestly, this is one of my favorite Cantonese noodle dishes. This is Singaporean my fun. And honestly, I'd never really seen them eat this dish in Singapore, so I definitely think this is a Hong Kong creation. But they have their own style here. They added some Napa cabbage, which I actually think might be from some of the Fujinese influence because uh, they are Fujinese owners, but they also are masters at the Cantonese fast food cuisine, man. Look at this stuff. It's very clean, guys. It's not too greasy. The shrimp is very plump. That is some of the cleanest Xing Chao Tao Mai Fun out there. I'm not even gonna lie. Even sometimes if you get this at a restaurant, they won't spend as much time on it because this is not what they specialize in. So sometimes they'll just whip it out as like a filler dish. But this, this is the main event. Of course, a classic dish at any Chinese hood spot is the chicken wings and plantains. And of course, plantains, this is gonna be something that you're gonna more find in New York and maybe the overall East Coast because of the Caribbean influence out here. But of course, Guys, these chicken wings, they don't really try to make them too Chinese. They keep them pretty plain. They don't put like the salt, pepper, garlic on it and stuff like that. They just keep it regular to let the hot sauce shine. So guys, we showed you Shun Wei earlier over on Catherine Street, but this is Golden Forest on Grand Street. Mmm, whoa. I can actually tell in the seasoning, they put chicken powder in the batter. So it's like chicken on chicken is the double chicken flavor. When it comes to Chinese American restaurants and Chinese takeout spots, I, I, I see why people want to elevate it and reinvent things, but I don't think that's always the case. I don't think you need to do that. I think all you need to do sometimes is tweak things, maybe upgrade the quality of things. You don't even have to change the recipes completely. I mean, look at Chris, he's running a successful business. You know, he has been in America for a while. 
um, so he understands how to keep customers happy and basically man you just provide good quality and be nice and ultimately I think it's gonna work out all right so our next spot on Marco's personal list <laughs> we're outside of mana one bakery uh, right still here on Catherine there's a lot of hidden gems on this street and you love this spot like you oh. were telling me about this bakery I know they have multiple locations but you like this location I've been coming here since I'm a kid my my aunt my great aunt my great uncles we all get the tau shu bells and we get the hot dog buns so she recommended you know me get the ham and egg sandwich have you ever had the ham and egg uh, I oh. have I have okay. had that I had the ham and egg the tau shu bell, uh the coconut bread oh let me get the ham and egg you get the ham and I'm egg I'm the ham and egg man. So the owners of Mana One are originally from Hong Kong and you know during the pandemic they're just trying to stay afloat. They said that they weren't able to release any new items so they're just doing the traditional ones, the ones that they know will sell. All right. Yo, ham and egg, they didn't go for that uh, that yellow folded egg. Mm. They went for a real egg. That's the real egg, That's a fried egg right there. Yeah. And I got Ovaltine. I don't know if you ever had this, but... Never have. Next time. Never next have time. All right, we got next time. Let's see. My, my Marco just got his teeth done. Yeah, so. yeah teeth so you can't, done. Yeah, you can't drink anything with color. I get it. All right. Yo, Catherine has cra got crazy stimulus, man. I just feel like we're like in a village in China. Like, Andrew, we are on Taoyang Lu. Man of one bakery. bakery. All right, let's break it open, bro. Yeah. Jin Dan Fo Te Bao. That's a real egg right there. The glizzy this... bread. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. The glizzy bread, though, that's a classic. The one thing that always caught my eye when I came here as a kid was just the bread, the shininess of it, but like this, uh, the the sweetness of the bread is mm. it's, it's amazing. Oh, watch out! We got a tractor coming through. You know, you know that guy? I do. Yeah, no, that's my that's my cuisine, uh, Carmine. What? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I'll say this, Man of One Bakery tastes like a neighborhood spot in Hong Kong, very authentic. Uh, they have multiple locations, guys. Check out Man of One Bakery. Yo, this announcement that they have running on a loop, David, is just saying bread, one for one dollar. Bread, one for one dollar. Pao, yap ko, yap man. Hun ao, you good? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. on to the next spot. 我们点的都是福州菜，对吗？对，我们这家就是福州的，正宗的福州，呃，正宗的福州人，城市城市出来的，嗯，做的很标准吗？对呀，对呀，对呀，对呀，对呀，对呀，对呀，对呀，对呀
seafood Nifan. Yeah. Pretty good. Bro, that's very roasty. That's way better than I thought. I forgot that this was a seafood dish. I thought it was like intestines, so I really was not excited. But when I realized that it's actually like squid and, and cuttlefish and maybe some large clams, it's good. That actually might have been the best dish. I love the texture of the mi fun. It's like really small, but it's light and fluffy, and it's just kind of like dissolving in my mouth. No. That is one of the most underrated noodle dishes in the Chinatown world. As far as the Tsingbaku Kai Fan, the mushroom and chicken dish, I struck out again. Moving on with Cheap Chinatown Eats part nine, guys. If you are a late night foodie around New York City, this is probably one of your low key slept on spots that only a few people know about. It's Yunshang Rice Noodle. A, they specialize in Guo Chiao Mian, which is crossing the bridge noodles from Yunnan, but they also have uh, garlic crawfish. We gotta check it out. Delicious. Mala Xiao Long Xia. And Art, you guys, I know that we already covered Yue Wang and I named it one of the best, if not the best, uh, meats spot in Chinatown, but I just had to get the peapot duck one more time, guys. I don't think we had enough focus on it last time. Like I said, guys, the peapod duck is a regular roast duck that has gone through in an additional drying process. It's almost like dry aged steak. I just got these drinks from different cup, different flavor. And basically they have a new menu from three months ago. And three months ago, I just gotten a little snack there, the little spiral tornado thing, but they got new drinks. Here is a layered avocado milk tea with real avocado in there. As you can see, there's faint lines of green right here. That's for the avocado, beautifully made. You actually have a mango yogurt milk drink. Okay, and both of these, this one was 650, this one was 550. And they're using coconut milk, right? They are using coconut milk. I got this Mexican chicken wrap, which of course you've never seen in Chinatown before. This right here was $5. So would you say, Andrew, in 2021, these boba spots are kind of like doing something different? Bro, I think boba spots, they can really have fun with the snacks because they're cooking like the same thing, whether it's popcorn chicken or chicken skewers, but then you just wrap it up differently. And Throw then a you, different sauce on it. You have a whole new item. Yo, honestly, it's pretty interesting. Quite good, it's got spicy chicken, a little spicy mayo, and then it has cucumbers and lettuce. Honestly, that is a great snack. Very flavorful and very fresh. Chi Wu Tea. Honestly, from the Mexican chicken burrito to these avocado coconut milk smoothies, Chi Wu Tea, I'm gonna go ahead and give it at least like a four out of five. All right, you guys, we've arrived at Yun Shang Rice Noodle, and we actually have come here a few times on our own and not filmed it. Man, I actually really like this spot because it's open pretty late. Uh, it's really one of the only spots in Chinatown that is open past 10, 8, 10 p.m. right now. Garlic crawfish. Bro, so David, uh, crawfish in China, it it's doesn't come from like some American Cajun influence, right? They've been eating crawfish in China for many decades. Well, but the thing is guys, most people who eat crawfish uh, live around a lot of rivers, not oceans, because that's where crawfish or crayfish are found. And um, in China, there are a lot of rivers. Yeah, no, I mean, I remember going to Shanghai, uh, what, 15 years ago maybe, and they were, <laughs> crawfish was big. Ma la xiao, xiao long xiao. This is actually my first time getting this. Wow, that's actually not bad at all. Uh, so the garlic one was about $17. Both flavors are, like we said, we're gonna break it right here. Some people, they like to, uh, you know, juice the head. Where do you stand on the crawfish debate? Because a lot of people say, you know, it's a lot of work, but not a lot of meat. I think if you grew up eating it, you're gonna like it. For me personally, I don't lean towards crawfish. I don't have a problem with it. I think it has its place, but it's definitely not my favorite. I would rather eat shrimp. I think it's a great way to get involved with a group of people, but I'm not gonna sit down by myself and bang out, you know, 30 crawfish. Ultra dry peapod duck with this really sweet caramel sauce they gave me that's like, I don't even know, it's ultra sweet. And we wanna note that this is not from Yunshang Mishan. This, uh... From Ye Wong across the street. Yes, this duck is from Ye Wong. Okay, so I'm taking the extra, I'm taking the extra crispy duck here, and I got this sweet sauce, David, that I'm pouring onto it. Do you know what kind of sauce this is? Is this that plum sauce? What is this supposed to be? It's like a double sweet version. Double sweet version of plum sauce on the extra crispy duck. Wow, very like jam-like, kind of honeyish. I would venture to say that most people who have been eating roast duck their entire life, even other ABCs, 
do not get the peapod duck. But from now on, anytime I get the chance, I'll take the peapod over the regular duck. All right, you guys, this is the Gorge Hao Mim. I got the mushroom one. It's got the fish and pork balls already in it. Andrew, this is, uh, sometimes people get it wrong and they start dipping it like it's hot pot throughout, but there's no flame underneath this pot, so it's not gonna keep cooking. So we gotta go shrimp, lop churn, shang chang, wood yeah. ears, some sort of a uh, pickled radish, garlic sauce. some sort of pickled garlic. Yeah, that one's good, that's a big. Quail egg. Tou pi, tofu skins. Love that. Slice of ham. It was kind of comical. Random, the ham. Of course, here um, I also ordered some additional slices of beef. Um, I could have ordered chicken, pork, fish. I had a couple different options. Last but not least, once all the meat has cooked, you want to put the noodles. You do not want to put the noodles first. I know that is also a common rookie mistake. Here we have actually one of the classic Chinese side dishes. Now, oftentimes it is not believed that Chinese have like the equivalent of panchan, like the Koreans, but this is actually one of them. So they're slightly blanched shredded potatoes tossed in some vinegar, chili oil, and the dish is called tudo si. And different spots make it different, um, but personally I like my potatoes shredded very thin and very light and I like this dish here, so let me try it I out. love this dish, it's only $6 here. The crawfish, they mm. were a little bit expensive, 17. Of course, this noodle right here at its base was $12. Every add-on is about $2. Ooh! I mean, what more could you ask for? Gua chow mein, crossing bridge noodles, mixed mushroom. You guys, I think that this is such a good alternative to getting a hot pot. Hot pot can be expensive. Sometimes you don't have somebody to share with. Um, even, I think some of like the, the boiling point style is a little bit unwieldy. We even me sometimes with the fire underneath. Mm -hmm. I think that Yun Nao Guo Chao Mian, the crossing bridge noodles, is an excellent, excellent alternative under $15. I love how the flavor is light. Sometimes with hot pot, it feels like that you have to get a very, very salty, strong broth because you know, you're really just cooking your stuff in there and then picking it out. Man. Oh my goodness, man. We are being so Yun right now. Oh my gosh. Honestly, I would say, given that they, you do get some a lot of things for $12, it's like probably one of the cheapest experiential foods you can get in Chinatown. I'm not saying it's the cheapest of the cheap, but in terms of getting an experience with it, I mean, you probably could take a girl on a date here or take your significant other here. $12, it's about as cheap as experiential gets. All right, Andrew, overall here at Yunshan, what was your favorite thing? I'm gonna go ahead and say the Crossing Bridge Noodles. You get so many different flavors. You could pick sour fish, you could pick pickled cabbage, you could pick pork, beef, chicken, um, or of course, I picked mushroom. Listen, David, for the price and how late this spot is open, everything is solid. But for this meal, I gotta go with the crawfish garlic flavor. I mean, I could just drink this broth as is. And normally, guys, this spot is open till 3 a.m., obviously pre-COVID. <laughs> oh, All right, this All is right. Dan's very first time having a crawfish. Yep. Is it your first time or not? Uh, first time like, opening myself like this. You got to uh, you know, break the, the arms off. <laughs> bro. You got you to break the bot where the body is. Yeah, the right here. Yeah. Don't okay. suck the juice, bro. All right, so in your honest opinion, is it worth the effort or not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, our next spot is Nori Thai. We've filmed here before. Chad, this is your spot. Yes. And um, you guys have some cheap eats. Yeah, so uh, our food is priced reasonably well. We're uh, very well known for our all-day happy hour. $6 beer, $7 wines, $8 well drinks. Before seven, you could get any one of these skewers right here for 25 cents. Yo, 25 cents is ridiculously cheap. Now, I understand that your entrees and stuff may not fall into our typical Chinatown cheap eats, but your skewers for 25 cents after you buy a six, seven dollar beer, that's that's a crazy deal. Yeah, so, so our beer prices, wine and well drinks is all day. So like I said before, before seven, these are our vegetable options right here. You have the eggplant, king oyster mushroom, okra, and uh, Brussels sprout, sorry. They're all glazed with lemongrass. Lemongrass chicken, lemongrass pork, spicy Cuban chicken, spicy Cuban pork. Man, now that the weather's warming up, it's starting to feel kind of like Thailand. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we also have these Tom Yum chicharrones. Um, obviously this is not a traditional Thai dish, but you guys sprinkle some of your Tom Yum salt on there. That's really cool. And then your lime fries are super well known. 
and these are really, really fire. Because what? These are these are Thai lime, right? Yeah, they're they're uh, kaffir lime fries with uh, tum yum aioli. Guys, oh my god, kaffir goodness. lime. These are some of my favorite fries. Actually, you can get in Chinatown. Oh, oh my goodness, these fries are incredible. Chad, I'm not gonna lie. For 25 cents, this officially makes it cheap, way cheaper than that Shao Cao cart across the street. 25 cents. I want to say it's not even that cheap in China, at least in the city. Yeah, pre yeah pretty much. Uh... You know, even though it is our happy hour special, we don't make the portion smaller right. than our regular uh, out of cart entrees towards the dinner time. Um, but yeah, we, we're not skimping on anything here. Guys, it just goes to show you, you can find Chinatown cheap eats even in spots that are, you wouldn't expect. All right, you guys, Mine. this is one of my very favorite spots in all of New York City, Nori Thai, mm. Grand Street. Come check oh. it out. You will not find better skewers for 25 cents. So uh, the owners of this spot are from Tianjin. If you guys know about Tianjin, Tianjin is really known for dumplings, so they're doing Tianjin style huo tie here. That's almost like the number one style in China. All right, you guys, uh, we are in front of fried dumpling right here, and um, I had no idea this spot existed, but it's got pretty decent Yelp ratings. We are on, uh, I forgot which street we're on right now, maybe Madison or Monroe? Henry. We're on Henry, I'm sorry. You know, my two Bridges streets get a little confused sometimes. Yeah, we gotta look at these Tianjin guo tie which is uh, it's a very northern style from Tianjin. All this, by the way, guys, was $4. They also have Tianjin Shaolong Baos, guys. I've never even had one of these before. I didn't even know they had Shaolong Baos in Tianjin. That's just what they call it. I think it just has some juice in it. Let's check it out. <laughs> it ain't bad for $2 in order, guys. I especially recommend the Guo here. Two dollars, two dollars. And they call these Tianjin Shaolong Baos. Tianjin Shaolong, like Tianjin Baozi, but it's different. It's Tianjin soup dumplings. Well, they're, they're, they they wrapped them. Yeah, you're right. It is more like a Guobli Baozi, but they call them Shaolong Baos. Plenty of juice chai, aka chives. Not bad. Honestly, this is one of the best two dollar dumpling spots I've ever been to. Come check it out, guys. Henry Street. Just simple name, fried dumpling. Yeah, right. um, yeah, I come here all the time. They're, they're actually really good for a dollar. Like it's okay. crazy. Which dumplings do you usually get? Um, I usually I just get two dollars of the regular dumplings, uh, pork. Um, we we actually come here for like years to be honest. Yeah, for two dollars you can't beat it. Hey guys, so even over the course of filming this Chinatown Cheap Eats series, you know sometimes restaurants change concepts. So right now we are outside of what used to be Bepga, and you guys remember that from Cheap Chinatown Eats Part One. Now we're at Part Nine, and now it has become rice and miso. But of course, guys, On is still around. The French Vietnamese guy, yo, On, tell us about this spot right now because you're a partner here. What's going on? So rice and miso, uh, it's a homestyle Japanese uh, eatery, and it's all based on uh, uh, miso and rice. That's why it's called rice and miso. And it's a bento box made with uh, which has a uh, onigiri in it. So homemade onigiri, we have a choice of onigiri, and it's all you know uh, healthy food and but tasty. All right, hey, from Bepga to rice and miso, let's go. All right, so we got our two bentos here at Rice and Miso, and the bentos here actually come with onigiri rice instead of just like a regular like serving of rice. And here I got the chicken with actually a very special scallion sauce. Here you have the uh, salmon here that's all marinated in koji, which is a fermented rice. You got your side dishes. You have your seaweed with tomato. You have your radishes. You got your green beans, radishes again. You know kind of like a palate cleanser, get, get your little veggies in there. It's very healthy. And I think a lot of people are familiar with Japanese restaurant food, whether that's like an omakase or some other type of thing, but this is actually what a lot of Japanese people are eating at home, some version of this. And this is obviously, you know, like a very nice elevated lunch at a price point coming in at about 15 and $18 respectively. Yeah, for Chinatown, that's not super, super cheap, but we're talking about high quality here. Wow. Yo, that salmon was cooked perfectly. It was really soft. I was expecting it to be a little bit more firm. It wasn't overcooked though. Let me try these green beans. No, lots of flavor and it tastes very healthy. Mmm. It is called rice and miso. So of course you have your miso soup right here. It definitely does look next level. You got a little bit of mushrooms and vegetables in there. 
life expectancy in Japan is, is very high and, and people age very, very well there. And I think if this is what they're eating, I could tell, man, because this is healthy and it's tasty. You got a lot of great fermented stuff that's good for your gut, you know, a lot of high, you know, a lot of probiotics and stuff. So overall, man, rice and miso, if you guys are looking for a high quality, healthy lunch, I can see it right here on the Lower East Side. This is something that Manhattan does not have a lot of. I think it's actually more prevalent in Brooklyn, but here, check it out. All right, so our next spot on Cheap Chinatown Eats Part 9 is a spot that a lot of people requested that we cover the backstory of. We're at Spongy's Cafe, and basically Fernando is a Mexican guy who learned how to make sponge cakes from a sponge cake master, and he has opened up his own spot here, and they are some of the best ones in town. Hey man, shout out to Fernando. I think that that's a beautiful American story, right? You know, Chinese guy moves to America, becomes a sponge cake master or was a sponge cake master back in Asia. Obviously he has an apprentice who's Mexican, Fernando. He goes on to open up his own shop with his own influences, his own twists. That's a dope story. Hell yeah, that's hard work and dedication at, right there at its best. And he is right on Sponge Cake Alley. Like this is a little dessert block here between Hester and Canal. Yeah, and all types of mochi donuts and sponge cake galore. Let's check it out. All right, so I am right here with the man himself, Fernando. Yo, Fernando, nice to meet yeah. you, man. Where, where are you originally from? Uh, Mexico. Okay, man, what, what's the story behind Spongies? The story behind Spongies, so this is, uh, whatever I do right now is uh, my seafood legacy. Uh -huh. He's original from Taiwan. He's starting on, uh, his uh, parents come from Hong Kong. How did you want to make uh, sponge cakes traditional, but also do something different with it? Okay, this is tradition. I learned it from my grandmother. So when I started working with, with my seafood, so he just, uh, I mixed everything together between Spanish and uh, Asian. So that's how I started everything come out much like, you know, it's coming different. It's totally different compared to the rest of the people. So Andrew, you were telling me that this sponge cake cooked by Fernando has some Spanish traits in there, yeah. as well as obviously the Cantonese traits. It's actually a fusion. So it's like pretty much half a uh, Hong Kong sponge cake and then half like Spanish sponge cake. But to be fair, the Hong Kong style was already mixed with like a British style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a fusion on a fusion. Here we go. David, you have the green tea one. Guys, they already sold out of a lot of flavors, so we weren't able to get everything. But trust me, this is good. This is good stuff, man. Okay, I have the cranberry flavor. I think everybody has their preference, but these are really good sponge cakes. They're Yo, honestly, really fluffy. I definitely know why they sell out for a reason early, because they're really, really good. Uh. This is something really interesting they do here. Obviously more from the Hispanic or European side of influence is the roll cake, but with like jelly and fruit in the middle. Yeah, so it does kind of look like one of those uh, Cantonese Hong Kong uh, cake rolls, but it's definitely like an in-between because like we said, a lot of the Hong Kong bakery items have roots from Europe because that's where they got the whole kind of like bakery style well, from. Hong Kong was a European colony. The roll is $6. The sponge cakes are $1. I mean, come here, you get a little fluffy cake. It's very nice, it's whole fluffy. And uh, yeah, it's tasty. Hey, you guys, Spongy's Cafe. This is one of the best new Chinatown cheap eats. You gotta check it out. And we're here at Shinka Ramen over on Bowery. And we've actually been here before, but let me tell you this, this is one of those modern kind of non-traditional ramen spots, but they take the ramen art very, very seriously. Now they just released their new Mexican items. So they have this brand new lamb shank birria ramen and they have beef cheek birria tacos too. So these three tacos are about $10. And then this ramen, for this special one is gonna be about $17, $18. But for the lamb shank, I mean, that's totally worth it. Okay, so for the special edition, they're gonna give you this humongous lamb shank and it's been soaking in their consomme, which is super smoky because they put like three different types of Mexican smoked chilies in here. And the ramen noodles are of course very traditional. So, wow, this lamb shank is just falling apart, bro. It's so juicy, I'm excited. And by the way, if you're wondering, this spot has won some Japanese ramen awards. Just look at the, look at the awards, man. They speak for themselves. Yes, is this a Chinatown Cheap Eats? You know what, for what you're getting, I'd say it's a really good value. This is the Lamb Shank Birria Ramen. Yo, oddly enough, it really does taste like a mixture of some very smoky consomme with kind of like some tonkatsu elements. So it's a little bit thicker, but honestly, that is super good. All right, guys, time to try the queso birria tacos here at Shinka. This is in Chinatown. This is beef cheek queso birria. I've never had beef cheek in a birria taco before. This is the consomme. Wow. 
Wow, super smoky. Add a little pickles there. Wow. Guys, I gotta give the ramen and the tacos five out of five, cinco out of cinco. I'm giving it. Guys, these are a must try in Chinatown. I know that there's not a lot of great Mexican food in the area, but man, this is next level crispy, next level juicy, next level meat. Fresh elote at a ramen shop in Chinatown. Guys, they are doing things differently and they got a beer garden out there. You guys just gotta come to Shinka Ramen. I know it's very low key, it's hard to see from the street, but if you walk in, you are going to get yourself a culinary experience. All right, you guys, we are looking at the $4.50 drinks here from 12 Corners. Marco, you said something interesting off camera. What was it? Yeah, so like whenever I'm in Chinatown, I usually just see like, like boba tea shops. So this definitely sticks out for sure. Right, Don being Chinese American, but owning a coffee coffee shop is more rare. Obviously, I would say it's more like a Korean thing to own a coffee shops typically. Yeah. Now here we have some non-coffee drinks. You have a pumpkin spice latte, you have your hibiscus tea, you have a lychee matcha lemonade, and then you have your rose lavender latte here. So these are really, th these are the 2021 drinks, you know, that you need on your menu and they're refreshing going into spring and summer. I'm excited. Yo, shout out to Don. Let's go. I knew I had to try the lychee lemonade matcha mix because I knew that was going to be an interesting mix. David, try this. Yo, this you know better. why this is pumpkin spice latte is better? Because it tastes like roast Chinese pumpkin. Wow. Yo, I'm not even lying, guys. Not just because we know Don. This is a good drink. This is good. It's a fire. The lychee lemonade matcha. Lychee lemonade as matcha. As far as I know, they're the only ones doing matcha lychee, so. I'm gonna give this one a five out of five. That one, you know, it's PSL, but like I said, the, is the pumpkin flavor more like a lam gua? It's more like a squash. Wait, real quick, is it like Starbucks pumpkin spice? All right, Marco, you try it. All right. Try this. Uh, I'm white. Caucasian. He got the Caucasian. antibody. He got the antibody. Yeah, that's a good PSL. Oh, man. Listen. No, it's not as artificial, right? That's really good. Come to your local spot. Don't go to those big corporations like Starbucks. Come over here and try it out. Hey, you can get a hibiscus tea here instead of Starbucks. Everything's solid, man. Across the board, less than $5 each. Come to 12 Corners here on Elizabeth. Refreshing drinks for the summer. Our next Chinatown cheap eat is multi-sweet. Now, Andrew, multi-sweet is really interesting because they're bringing a bakery concept from China 2021 to the US. So here's the story. There are actually students that are from China that studied in the US. They stayed here and they wanted to open up a cool business and they really got into doing all different types of new bakery goods. Now, some are based in Chinese tradition and some are not. Can you tell us real quick about multi-sweet? Like when someone asks you, what is it? What do you say? Um, all right. So actually it's like my second week working here. So I'm like new, but um, we have all these like Chinese style desserts here. And uh, basically um, these kind of egg yolk puffs are, are, more, are more like like traditional Chinese stuff, but like, uh, shortcakes are like they were like super popular in mainland China like during the last decade but like it's like a new new like trend in China so they like they kind of brought these trends also here because right, the, the flavors are more updated right yeah it's not just super super traditional Chinese flavor but like it's super popular in mainland China like with like younger people what I like about Mata Sweet, and I know it's just a little stall inside of Nori Thai here on Grand Street, but they're taking all these popular pastry and bakery items that are popular amongst the millennials and youth in China right now, and they're recreating them here. All right, so let's go through. I mean, can we try like maybe the top five, six things? All right, you guys, you heard the story. This is the next up on Chinatown TV, part nine, Multi Sweet. Bro. These are trendy pastries in China. So these are what people our age are eating in China. So this is really cool for me. I, I got the mochi matcha oh, dong tai. You know, I gotta go with the durian. One thing I know about people in Asia is they generally don't like their sweets as sweet, especially in China. The ratio of durian paste inside of this pastry is perfect. I'm getting some in every bite and the durian's not too funky. I think this is a great, segue into durian for anybody who wants to try it. I think with, for anybody with more traditional taste buds, they're gonna say that matcha mochi dan tat is a five out of five. Taro and matcha, these are about 450 each. It is fascinating to have that much egg yolk, mochi, and crispy flaky pastry all at the same time. Normally you would think those flavors would be separated. All right, here we got some classic flavors. I have the classic dan ta, AKA dan tat, AKA egg tart. I've actually got uh, the pork floss, the rok song, rok song. And you know what I've been really impressed by here, Andrew? This is actually like an advancement 
of an older style, mm -hmm. but not breaking that older frame. Yeah. This is, still would appeal to somebody who's like 70 or 80 if you could get them to try it. Yo, because to be honest, this traditional pastry, David, you already know me. I don't like it. If you are looking for treats to bring your parents, your grandparents, but still give them something new, it's true, Andrew, that a lot of the really modern uh, dessert shops, those items are probably not gonna appeal to your grandparents due to the nature that it's uh, it's too westernized, it's too sweet. Um, and I love all those boba shops, Bibble and Sip too, but if you want something to give your grandma, come to Multi-Sweet. Multi-Sweet over in Nori Thai, it's not too sweet, it, it's just right. Hey, I'm not gonna lie, Andrew, I always told you, I have fob taste buds. Dude, I like it. You're kind of a fob. I don't go against it. All right, you guys, next up on Chinatown Chief Eats is the little one. Now, this spot is offering some of the best Japanese desserts in the city at an affordable price, and nobody knows about it because it's on East Broadway, guys. We're in the middle of a very uh, inconspicuous neighborhood that you would not believe some of the best Japanese desserts are being cooked on, but believe me, they are. Let's check it out. Everything is made here. Uh, we make it from scratch. All the recipes are ours. Uh, the only thing that we import from Japan is the Manaka shells. We are here at the Little One. Like I said, I'll stand by this. The most affordable, best Japanese dessert spot in New York City. Right now, we're looking at a strawberry kakboko and a hojicha lemonade. Two advanced flavors. Let me just try this. I have not had this strawberry kakboko before. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next up, we've got the hojicha lemonade. Wow, that's way more refreshing, but in terms of something decadent, I'm gonna go with strawberry capico. Next up, we are looking at two incredible desserts here at The Little One. One is hojicha tiramisu. This is matcha banana pudding. I'm super excited to try both of these. Oh my goodness, they almost got this in a little container like a, like a TV dinner, but it's not a TV dinner. I think the reason that they're able to encapsulate decadent and light is because the cream is one more of the Japanese style cream, which looks heavy, but it isn't. And then the flavors are tea flavored. So you just gotta got a whole lot of oxymorons in the best way possible going on. Next up, we've got matcha banana pudding. Guys, um, this is about, you know, $11. But it doesn't matter because one person's probably not gonna eat this completely. It does qualify as a Chinatown cheap eat because uh, you could split this dessert amongst many friends. Wow. Listen, well. guys, I've always been a fan of banana pudding. You know, shout out to the Midwest, the heartland, Missouri, wherever banana pudding comes from. But I'm moving on to the next wave. The little one got big taste. You guys, this is a cheap eat for what you are getting this is a bargain six dollars for this kakigori five dollars for this gufata you know chrysanthemum monaka with the honey drip with from real bees you guys kakigori obviously uh japanese shaved ice there's a lot of different things you can do to it um i opted to go with one you know for the vegans because it is matcha oat milk this is my favorite type of shaved ice is kakigori just the eatability and the ease of mouth feel is like Totally 10 out of 10. Check out this chrysanthemum monaka, perfectly shaped, honey drip. Looks like an emoji. How much more picturesque can it get? Woo, did you hear that, Chris? You guys are in a gourmet dessert, Japanese flavors, some sort of melding between Japanese and Chinese flavors. Come to the little one here on East Broadway. We gotta give a shout out real quick to Dunkin' Donuts right next door. Now I know Dunkin' is a gigantic multi-billion dollar chain, but these individual franchises are owned by a family. So this is owned by a Bangladeshi family and uh, they're super nice. Uh, I think this place is super important, especially for the non-Asian population. Although I have seen, you know, Asian Americans that are third, fourth generation that are more Americanized absolutely love themselves some Dunkin Donuts. So I wanted to showcase some of the new products that they got, uh, maybe new in the past year. This just came out. This is a coconut milk refresher. Pink strawberry, coconut milk, very similar to the pink uh, drink from Starbucks, which also used, you know, the dragon fruit and the coconut milk. Is it as good? You know, probably not. But is it also way cheaper and family owned? Yes. And of course, you know, I had to get my favorite hot food item from Dunkin' Donuts. I got the tortilla meat roll-ups. You know, you've got one ham, one bacon. 
I thought this was such a cool thing when Duncan started getting these because they reminded me of the ones that you would make when you were a kid. And of course, for myself, I got this from my mom. I have a taste for French curlers. Like I said, guys, I think it's important to remember that, you know, even, you know, multi-billion dollar corporations, sometimes individual shops are owned by a family. So, you know, I'm just trying to support everybody. Plus, I do think Duncan improved their menu game. Oh. 